China has pledged to strengthen its supervision of the supply chain for lithium batteries. Beijing's Ministry of Industry and Information Technology said strong demand growth and COVID disruptions have created a, quote, severely unbalanced situation. Our next guest says there is an urgency to secure lithium supplies from countries such as the US, Canada and Peru in order to help EV production and achieve climate goals. Simon Clark is with us, the CEO of American Lithium. Simon, there have been ongoing warnings about uh, the level of lithium supply that's available. Some are saying down the track it means we're not going to see the transition to EV vehicles as much as we'd hoped and it'll hit some producers more than others. Just spell out how dire the situation is. Well, I, you know, I think the situation has been summarized by the uh, International Energy Agency, other groups calling for, I think, up to 50 new mines to be built by 2050. Uh, and I was at a benchmark conference in L L.A. last week where they were saying we need to move from a, an installed base on the lithium-ion side of 600 gigawatts of batteries to 300 terawatts of batteries by 2050 if we're actually going to get to net zero. So, you know, the problem with lithium is there's plenty of it out there, but it's extremely difficult to recover it, and it's extremely difficult to recover it economically. And so we needed a, a concerted push, you know, from, I think, if you want the allied side to really start to develop this. China has been way ahead for a long time. If extraction and supply is so hard at this point and that's coming at a cost, does that mean that there will be some supplies that miss out? I mean, we've seen a lot of uh, transition uh, journeys at this point and uh, some of the ones that are doing particularly well, the high-end manufacturers. Does that mean the high-end will be well positioned but the low-end will not be down the track? I think, um, I, I think there's a focus on that right now, but I, I think um, if you look at the auto players and the, and, and the OEMs, they've, they've all bet the farm on, um, on EVs and getting to where they need to. So the latest term that I was hearing last week isn't, isn't demand destruction through lack of supply, it's, it's demand deferral. And that's the first time I've kind of heard that expression, and it's basically basically saying this is going to happen, it's just how long is it going to take. And so, again, I think, I, I, think, I think we have all the pieces in place if everyone, if you like, starts acting together. I think, unfortunately, you know, the, the pieces all have to come together. Are we just yeah. nimbys in the West? Is that the point? I, and the phrase nimby, I guess it's very Anglo-Saxon, uh, not in my backyard, whereas the Chinese are less squeamish about it. Is that just the long and the short of it? I, I, you know, I, I, I think there's an element of that, but I also think this, I just think the Chinese have, have, I mean, you have to take your hat off. They've played a great game for, for decades. They've been locking up some of the best assets across the world and quietly going about their business and developing knowledge on building lithium ion technology soup to nuts. And we've been very slow to react to that. And, you know, I think, I think now you can see in the U.S. with the Inflation Reduction Act and, and a number of measures that are coming into place that we're starting to wake up to it. But I think the big piece that has to happen is this, you know, Korea, Japan have some amazing technologies. In, in, in the U.S., we're trying to develop this industry, but we don't have all the knowledge. Yeah. And so, again, I think it's that piece of working together. I, I'm going to ask a, a bit of a fool's question now um, to the CEO of the American Lithium Associate Group. But, um, but uh, what about the alternatives? I keep hearing about sodium ion, about solid state, about fluoride. How's that looking? And, and are you... Uh, American Lithium investing in that as well, or is that just just ridiculous to think that a, a lithium-based company would do that? Well, we, I mean, we're really focused on the extraction of lithium, so we're not on the technology side. Um, you know, in my career, I have spent time on the technology side. I mean, what I would would say is it's taken us 40 years to get lithium ion to this stage. Right. Um, lithium is the lightest metal on the periodic table. Um, it's conductive. I don't really see that there is a better product for, certainly for applications like transportation. So, so yes, I'm sure there'll be other technologies developed, but to put up the supply chain, to do all the testing, to move it over, it takes, takes decades. Time, yeah. and, I, and, I, and I think lithium-ion has really proved itself as a really strong incumbent.
Can I ask you about the structure of the market? Because I think that's going to be important to, to the way we think about pricing going yeah. forward, isn't it? it? It seems increasingly that the market is moving away from private negotiated contracts to something that looks more like a proper market like yeah. oil with a spot price and then trading activity going on as both the traders get involved in the hedging that's happening by suppliers and buyers. And what is that ultimately going to do for the market do you think because it would suggest it will deepen and perhaps give tighter price discovery but I'd be interested in your view whether it, you see it as a good thing as a supplier into the market I, I, I think it's an I think it's an excellent point I think it's a key piece of it I mean unfortunately right now you've just got you know a myriad of different contracts out there and you have this spot price that has never been higher and is anyone actually paying the spot price mm -hmm. um, so I think in terms of if we're going to build these mines, the, the trouble is we don't need them in 10 years, we need them now, mm -hmm. and you need the capital for that. And I think having more of a proper developed market in terms of how you trade lithium is going to be very important to, to do that and to give people the encouragement to actually invest in lithium projects. We, we're looking at um, the markets this morning, and let, let me ask you a very short-term question then, um, because the Asian markets and oil are lower and I would anticipate that other commodity prices will be lower today and if you had to look for a reason it would be zero COVID in China and the fact we've got a spike in cases in Beijing and Guangzhou that also seems to be suppressing EV sales in China in the short term are we just going to see your share price and the share price of other lithium miners trend sideways and lower here whilst the government of China continues to insist that this is the only way to deal with the disease. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's again, it's interesting. I, I, think the, the, I think the trouble with a lot of the, the um, lithium players in the market is they are juniors by definition. And in a global risk-off environment, everyone gets hit with it. Again, the commodity's never been higher. I mean, if I think SQM came out with their results last week, and you know they're getting on average 54,000 a ton of lith for lithium carbonate and equivalent. And you know, just two years ago, that was probably six and a half thousand a ton. So they're they're doing spectacularly well, but it hasn't translated really into 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 following for the juniors. So. I mean, China, yes, there may be some slowing around the, the COVID lockdowns, but I think if you look at it year on year, they've come close to doubling the, um, the demand for EVs. And in the West, you know, we've had a great um, performance in terms of 40%. Um, so any forecast I've seen is kind of suggesting that we're going to have to go from five, 600,000 tons of lithium carbonate equivalent next year to emit uh, this year to a million tons next year. And, three to three and a half by the end of the decade so um you know and 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 the really interesting term that i heard again is this this thing of of uh, demand deferral rather than demand destruction simon can i just ask you about trade wars we've seen it in many different products uh, from uh, aluminium steel over the years semiconductors do you see the americans taking issue with lithium supply at some point and that has a negative consequence for china I, uh, I think it's coming. I think we're seeing a, a critical minerals cold war. Um, uh, you, you know, I mean, you can see it in some of the recent announcements by the Canadian government, which reflects what the U.S. government is also saying. Um, so, so, so absolutely. And I think with the Inflation Reduction Act, you see they're starting to put a premium on domestic sources of critical minerals. And so th 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 there's a real initiative to rest back some of the supply chain from from china i think china is in such a dominant position it's going to be very hard to do that but there's there's definitely i think you're starting to see that approach happening we've got to wrap it up simon nice to see you thanks nice for coming in it's a it's a very interesting story i think and one we're going to follow in detail uh, going forward simon clark ceo of american lithium